welcome to art class today. Um, I'm a teaching artist with Meta Arts and TWISP, and I do all kinds of different projects um, around the edges. I write children's books and illustrate them and do public art projects, like something you would see in a park or a library. Um, but my favorite thing is to go outside or um, find an interesting natural object um, in my house or my collection and do a little sketching and investigating. And so today we're gonna to do a lesson that I call nature journaling inside the box. Not outside the box, but inside the box. Lots of boxes actually. Um, there are so many ways to observe something and take that information in and record it. Um, and the best thing is there's no wrong way, right? Only right ways. So we are gonna to look today at six different ways that you can um, kind of observe and take that information in, all right? But the first thing we need is materials. So I would like you to make sure you have paper, um, pens or pencils, um, and something colorful, some way to add color, either watercolor paints or colored pencils, pastels, uh, crayons, whatever you have at hand. Um, but we'll need those couple things. Okay, do you have all of your materials set? If you do, let's proceed. Um, so we talked about all the different ways we can observe and a great way to capture those observations is through a nature journal. And that is just a place, just a piece on paper where you collect all those ideas in whatever way suits you, okay? They can be so many different things. Again, a million right ways and no wrong way. Um, but one thing to remember going forward is that you may have seen some things like that that are a bit more scientific and very organized and very perfect, um, but they don't have to be like that. That's one great way, but they can also be messy or colorful or bright or full of things or, or really simple. Um, so today we're gonna try to get as many of those different ways in our page as we can, okay? So first we are going to meet our new specimen. This is Harold. He is a horseshoe crab and one of my favorite specimens. And I thought it would be a good, interesting object subject um, for us to use today for all our different ways of investigating and observing. Um, and the first thing I need you to do is to make six boxes on your paper. So I'm just gonna divide this paper up into six boxes. They don't have to be anything special. You just need a few different zones, six different zones on your paper that we can fill with art and information. Okay, easy peasy. So the first one is going to be, hmm, let's see, how about geometry? Okay, and along the way, we're gonna label these so that later when you're doing a project like this on your own, you have a little reminder and you can say, what was that other box? Oh, geometry. So I'm just gonna write it in up here for my own memory. Geometry. So when I'm thinking about this specimen or any subject in terms of geometry, I'm thinking about those shapes, right? And if I look at this right away, I can see this is kind of one shape, almost like a circle or a half circle. There's kind of a triangle here. Maybe this is a really skinny triangle. And then as you get smaller and smaller, there's lots of other simple geometric shapes that make up this object, right? And so what we're gonna do on our paper is we're just gonna make some simple lines, all right? Nothing too crazy, get rid of that. And let's see. I'm working here, I might think, okay, there's kind of my half circle and I'm gonna add some things and say, oh yeah, oh, it went into the other box. Does that matter? No. And I'm gonna make some shapes and just work a little bit. And so all the way through today's lesson, you can pause at any point and do a little more work because I'm gonna kind of keep going um, but you can pause and take a couple more minutes in any of the sections that we're doing today, okay? So this is a great time. If you wanna pause for a second and look at your specimen and make those geometric references, 
then you can do it now. Okay, I think now we're ready for our second box of the day. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I wrote geometry and I put it in the other box. Fixed. Uh, for our second box, we will be using one of my favorites, the messy sketch. Messy. So for the messy sketch, it is another way to kind of look at the overall shape of your subject but rather than breaking it down into shape or geom geom geometric shapes, um, you are going to do a really fast, really energetic, um, messy sketch, okay? Where you just are scribbling and using tons of lines and probably some of those lines are really great ones and some of those are wild, but you're taking that information in and working it through your brain, through your hands, um, and getting to know the creature a little bit better. Okay, so I'll do a little demo and then I'll hold the specimen up for you um, to do your own messy sketches. So my messy sketch would be kind of like this. I'm looking at Harold and I'm saying, okay, oh my gosh, he's got like that shape and that shape and then he had that thing going on and then there's kind of some of those. And it's just like that, it's just wild and energetic. And I, they go so fast that maybe I'll just do another one. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll find a new orientation for him. Maybe I'll do it more like this, let's see. Uh, and he's got the thing in the front and then that's kind of a V and there's the spikies. And again, it's wild and at the end it might not look like anything too familiar, but that doesn't matter. You're still making that connection between your eyes and your hands and taking that information in, which is the most important, right? With this, and I think nature journaling, at least for me, it's more about the process than the product. Um, it isn't necessarily at the end of the day something that you would um, hang on the gallery wall or send to grandma, although you certainly can. Um, but the important thing is the doing and the observing and not so much the final thing, okay? So why don't you do a couple quick messy sketches All right, next step. We've got our geometric shapes, we've got our messy sketches. The next thing we're gonna look at is texture. So let me write it down. All right, when I'm thinking about texture, I'm thinking about mm, kind of what would that thing feel like? And maybe I can touch it, like right now I can, and I can feel that texture, um, but maybe it's something that I'm looking at um, out the window or in a photograph, or it's not really something I can handle. Um, but I can think about how would that feel if I could touch it? How would it feel, you know, against my skin? Or also what kind of patterns and sort of visual textures does it have, okay? I'm kind of using both those cues to um, take in information. And so when I look really close at Harold, there are some very cool textures. And I'll do a little demo and then I will um, let you take a really close zoom up look uh, for your own sketching. So when I look close, I'm noticing some cool things like he has these kind of little hair-like things. And I think they're pretty interesting, so I'm gonna put them down. Just, just make some kind of reference of those hairs because they are interesting things. And the other thing that's really catching my eye is these kind of, I don't know, it looks like the foam on top of a root beer float to me, I don't know. Um, but it's another really cool kind of pattern on the inside of his shell. And it's kind of like bubbly almost. And so I'm just gonna make a little reference to the bubbles. So I can go back and think about that later, okay? And why don't you look really close and see if you can come up with um, some interesting textures that you find in this subject.
So you got a really close up look. And whenever I start to go through these steps, especially when I start looking really close to something, um, I invariably end up with questions. Like before, when we were talking about those little hair-like things, I started thinking, why does a horseshoe crab even have hair-like things? What, what does that even do for him? And so another really cool part of nature journaling is adding text. And so I want to write right on my page the questions that are coming up for me and the other kind of verbal observations. Um, so I might say something like, why does he have hairs? I don't know why, but it's something that I could go back and research later. Um, and it's just kind of another piece of the whole puzzle. Another question for me might be, Oh, I know when I first got this specimen, one of my first thoughts was, which is the front? Does he move this way or does he move this way? <laughs> I don't really know. And I do know now, generally they move this way. But when I first saw him, I didn't know. And it was definitely a question I had. So I'm going to write it down here just along. You can fit it in anywhere you got space. Uh, which way? is front, right? And it's okay to just pile things on top, right? Because it's all just kind of to jog your memory later and like remind you of all the questions and curiosities that came up along the way, okay? So I would love you to pause for a second and come up with at least two questions um, and kind of curiosities that are coming up for you um, about our subject. All right, so I hope you got a couple questions down. And the next thing we're gonna talk about, or the next box for us is, um, let's call it a favorite detail or an interesting detail. I'm gonna say favorite detail for my uh, label. Fave detail. As you can see, perfect penmanship is also not a must. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking around at my specimen and my favorite detail or something that really interests me about him is this little spot here, kind of the joint where his tail connects to the rest of his body. And I have all kinds of questions and curiosities that are coming around that. Um, so I am going to draw a little detail of it. Just real simple, um, but something that kind of reminds me of that feature. So I'm just going to make some little reference. Uh, I'm going to write that it was a joint, maybe a tail joint. And you can look around and pick something um, that you find interesting that's kind of an interesting and favorite detail for you and draw a little bit about that detail. And then we'll come back. Okay, for our fifth box, um, we are going to do something Let's see, let's call it a, maybe an extra, the extra. <laughs> and with this box, I like to think about my subject or my, my object, whatever I'm focusing on, and choose something else that I can't see right now, but it's something else that is part of the story of this thing. Like for our specimen Harold here, it might be, something that he eats or something about the landscape that he hangs out in or something else in his environment, something else he might interact with um, on a regular basis. And so sometimes you have a lot of information. You're looking out the window, you have a lot of information in front of you. Um, 
But sometimes with something like this, we might not have much information at all, right? Like you might not know anything about horseshoe crabs. Maybe this is the first one you've ever seen. And in that case, you're gonna have to use your imagination, right? So you have your imagination as a tool. Um, if you once read a little something about um, beach ecosystems or about horseshoe crabs, and maybe you have a little more information to work with and you can use that. Um, or if you are looking out the window and you have a whole rich landscape in front of you, um, you've got a lot of information, but you're still gonna kind of make some guesses and speculations on what else might be just outside the frame, just outside your vision. You know, maybe there's a fox that just walked through your yard, but he's not there anymore, right? You could put him into your extra category, okay? Uh, I know a little bit about Harold and where he came from because I did collect him. And it was on a beach um, on a small mangrove island in the salt water um, at the edge of the Gulf of Mexico in northern Florida. And so I know a little bit about that and I can share that with you. Um, and one thing that I really liked in that kind of environment where he was um, were the mangroves. Mangroves are kind of this tree that grows sort of in and out of the water. Uh, so I'm going to put that into my extra category. Let's see. Mangroves have kind of these cool branchy roots or branch-like roots um, that reach out, reach, reach, reach. Maybe they reach, whoa, into the next page. And so I'm going to add those out. And then the water is kind of there. So I'm just going to take a little time and make my mangrove tree. So you can do a little thinking and use your imagination and your tools and your things you've learned um, and come up with something else that would be part of the scene around Harold uh, and add it to your page. Okay, so I hope you came up with some interesting extra subjects. Um, and for our last box today, we are going to talk about color and adding color into your pages. So when I'm out in the field, um, sometimes I don't have all my tools with me. I don't have all of my paints and pencils. Um, maybe I just have a few or maybe I don't have any or I don't have much time. You know, there's a lot, lot of different situations there. And so something I like to do um, is I like to get some notes down about the colors because maybe I want to go back later and add those colors in when I have more time or I have um, different tools. And so I might think about um, a little bit of a palette or a little bit of a selection of the colors that really stand out or that are the most common. Um, and so with a, with a specimen like Harold, he's not the most colorful guy we've ever seen, but again, if you start to look really close, um, which I am doing, I am noticing quite a few sort of interesting colors that are a little more subtle, but still um, really important. Like he's got kind of these almost mm, honey golden browns, and then he's got the kind of sandy brown, and then, since I'm able to look really close here, I'm able to see almost a mm, kind of a maroon or like a plum kind of color around the edges, which is really interesting. Um, so what I would do in this case is I would take uh, my paints or my pencils or whatever I have, and I would um, make some little swatches or some little boxes, okay? like. I was working here with a little bit of brown, you know, and you, I'm just going to make, ooh, that's not, that's not enough. Um, I am just going to make some little, some little spots of color. Okay. Just some little squares. Ooh, that's pretty dark. Right. And the nice thing is you can keep adjusting until you find what you want. And then you can circle it and say, oh yeah, that's the one. Right. And whoa, there was that there was that plum color. So I might do a little mixing if I have if I have the, the chance. I might do a little mixing of colors and try to come up with something that matches. Okay? And it doesn't have to be perfect, but 
you get what you can. So I've got a few uh, little swatches. Um, and another thing I would do is if I didn't quite find the color I wanted or if I didn't have my colors with me, I would make some, some notes um, like Whitsy. And I think it's more helpful rather than just saying brown or gray or purple. Uh, I'm going to try and be as descriptive as I can because that'll help me later, right? There's a lot of browns. But I think I considered it kind of a golden brown. So I'll say golden brown. And then there was like a sandy brown. So I'll put that in, sandy brown. And that plum color was interesting. So there's that plum. Um, let's see. That was also kind of a maroon. I'll write that on too, all right? And I could always go back and add those in later, right? So the next thing for you to do is work a little bit with your colors. And I'll give you a little zoom again on, um, on Harold. And try and come up with a couple different colors, uh, either with your, with your coloring tools or um, at least some reference words that will help you uh, kind of think about those colors. Okay. All right, I hope you had a moment to um, get some color notes on your page. And remember, you can go back afterwards anytime and add in as many colors uh, along the way as you want. You're welcome to color in with your new palette. You can color in um, any of the things you've done already today, um, or you can start fresh on a whole new piece. Um, so let's go over all the things we just went over. We had the geometries, where we broke things into geometric shapes. We have <laughs> the geometries, and we had the messy sketches, crazy messy sketches where you're just working fast and loose and really just like trying to get that idea into your hands. We had our favorite detail where we look around and say, what really interests us? What do we want to know more and investigate more of, like in detail? So that was our detail. Uh, texture. You're thinking about how something feels and looking at those kind of patterns and sort of intricate shapes and things um, up close and personal on the subject. We have our extra thing, which is something outside of the scene that you can see, like some other piece of the story, some other piece of the scene that you're bringing in from your imagination or from um, other things you've learned. And then we have colors, right? You can do little color swatches. You can do um, notes on what the colors look like and fill in color anywhere you want, okay? And along the way, we also did our questions, questions and observations. So don't be shy of adding those in as many as you want. Um, when you're starting a page, I think it's great when you first look at your subject to write down some observations of like, What's coming up already? Like, what are your questions? What are your things you're noticing before you even start to look more closely? It's a really good time to do it. So you have so many new tools for how to look at something in different ways. And I find these steps really good for something small and kind of simple. Well, maybe we won't call Harold simple, but <laughs> something like this that is just sort of um, an object in front of you but it's also really good for looking out the window or in the backyard or on a trip or a hike and you have a whole landscape in front of you, okay? It's even, I think, a really good tool if I look out at something and I'm like, meh, it's kind of boring. I'm not really seeing what's interesting to me in here. I swear, every time I start looking more closely and I look in kind of different directions, I find interesting things. And by the end, I say, wow, there was so much more here than I realized. And it was so much more fun and interesting than I thought at the beginning. Um, so it's a great tool in lots of different ways. And I hope that you will take these little tricks and tips and go out and this afternoon or any other time you have, um, try it again on your own, make your own nature journal page and you have your labels to kind of remind you some of the steps that we took um, and try it on your own and enjoy. But before I say goodbye, I wanna leave you with one little quote. It's by T.S. Eliot and it goes, 
We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. And I love that because it makes me think of coming back to a place with new eyes that observe and see more and differently and are able to capture that um, information and put it down in new and creative ways. So thank you so much for joining me today and I hope to see you again next time.